Hey everybody, Rosemater here, and welcome to the finale of my house in Fata Morgana, a Requiem for Innocence Let's Play. So, as with the original game, we have the backstage, uh, I guess you could call it a sub-episode as well, where it's a little bit more kind of tongue-in-cheek, fourth wall breaking, it's always kind of a fun time. Uh, so, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this game today, so I... I'm excited to see uh, what all the characters are going to say in the backstage episode, so let's go. What you're about to read is a chaotic fourth wall breaking peek behind the curtains of a Requiem for Innocence. It runs in complete opposition to the tone, blah blah blah. I uh, said about have fun and don't think too hard. We know what to expect. Hey, look at Morgana looking so pretty. I guess it's time for the obligatory backstage segment. I'm not really in the mood right now, so let's make this quick. Off to see Michelle then. Oh, <laughs> foom! <laughs> right away, it's just gotten goofy. What the? Something just zoomed past me. Jaren, enter stage left. Hey there, Morks. I haven't seen you in forever. You've gotten real big, huh? You must be getting pretty close to my age by now. But, oh boy, that is one mean-looking getup. No comment about, like, wow, your face looks normal. Something got you in a bad mood? It was a little more than a bad mood that turned me into a witch. What are you even doing here? Is there something wrong with that? You tell me. Look at the background art. Look at me. This is the cursed mansion. Details. It wouldn't be much fun of an extra if we got caught up in silly quibbles like internal consistency. I suppose, but... And if you ask me, you're the one who doesn't belong here, Morks. Huh? What is that supposed to mean? The story this time around was from before the mansion went all spoopy and gloomy and creepy crawly. So, I say... Yes? Let's blow this joint. What? Hey! Stop pulling on my arm. It'd be funny if she pulled on the one with that was all bones and just pulled it right off. <laughs> We've landed, Captain. Ha, ha, ha. Why here? And why am I so young? <laughs> because this is the morgues we all know and love. Changing what I look like doesn't change what I am. I'm not that foolish little girl anymore. I think it's an adorable combination. Mini cursing morgues. I'll take a dozen. I'll have you know, I am not for sale. Ugh, it's impossible to keep my footing around you. Hee hee hee. Thanks, morgues. I try. That wasn't a compliment. Ah, oh, I almost forgot. There was one other thing I wanted to change, just for the extra. Huh? Change what? Scar, scars, go away. Come again another day. Now, if only that had been able to happen in the actual game, I imagine that so much would have changed. We all healed. Hey, you can't just nursery, nursery rhyme my scars away. Oh, I'm excited to see like when Yakubo comes in and is like, whoa, hey, do you have any idea how much suffering they've caused me over the years? I mean, she is still like 12 years old, so it's still a little weird. <laughs> it's a lot weird. So hopefully he keeps it, you know, not too weird. What's the big deal? If it hurts, isn't it better if it's gone? Plus, I was told anything goes, because this is an extra. Ah, uh, I've reached enlightenment. I'm just wasting my energy trying to fight you, it seems. That's the spirit. Embrace the extra and have fun. No one will ever be able to embrace the extra as much as you. Just because I've surrendered doesn't mean I'm magically having fun. You're as hard-headed as ever, Morks. Well, what can you do? Anyway, time to do some backstagey stuff. Let's go talk to people. First up is the main character of A Requiem for Innocence, Jackie. Well, you're going alone. Oh, come on, at least give it a little thought. I've given it centuries of thought, thank you very much. Aww. And here I thought you liked Jackie, Morks. I despise him. Weird, I remember the two of you being like two peas in a pod. There were a few incidents after you died, to put it lightly. So, if you wish to speak with him, you can do so without me. That's true, Jaren would have had no idea. I don't care how much you pull, I'm not going, and that's that. Fine. Thank you. I'll bring Jackie here, then. By the power vested within me, I summon you, Jackie. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, why couldn't it have been young, hot <laughs> Yakubo? I don't like this Yakubo. What the? What happened? What? Jaren? And Morgana? You've gotten younger. And your face is healed. Hey there, Jackie. Whoa, what's with the duds? You look kinda like the Lord. That's wild. Because I am the Lord. Weird. My Lord was Francois, not you. 
Well, um, uh, there were a few incidents after you died, to put it lightly. Huh. Well, either way, this is the backstage, so I'd rather you be the Jackie I always knew. Yeah, excuse me? I cannot simply become someone else. And quit talking so stuffy, it's giving me the heebie-jeebies. That's right, Jaren, bring him- make him the Jackie that we all love. The boy I used to be died many years ago. I am no longer a foolish child with his head in the clouds. Jeez, you're both stubborn as mules, aren't you? I bet Morgs is super uncomfortable with you in that outfit. That's putting it lightly, so back you go. Fine. <laughs> hey, there he is. Are you happy now? Getting closer, you're hanging halfway off the screen. Just so you don't get any stupid ideas, I'm not going to be nicer to you just because you've changed clothes. Then what was even the point? Look at him, even his face looks nicer. He's just, man. And the first game, I never would have thought of Yakubo as attractive, and then this game just changed my mind on it. He's such a- he like, just looks like such a pretty boy. Come on, guys, you're gonna set the place on fire if you keep throwing around sparks like that. Maybe he'll chill out a bit if the rest of the gang's here. You're not planning on bringing everyone back, are you? You bet I am- oh gosh, what if she brings back Francois too? That would be awkward. Can't have a reunion of the slum crew without boss and beefcake. Wait, slow down. Okay, team, let's get going. Uh, let go of me, damn it. You're coming too, Morgs. I I'm perfectly fine here. Full speed ahead. I guess, the I mean, without the maid around to be, like, our... Our guide, I guess. Jaren is the perfect person to take that place. Hey guys, it's been a hot minute. It sure has. Beefy as ever, I see. And you look as dopey as I remember. Haha. <laughs> and hey to you too, boss. Still the hottest girl in town. Ah, thanks. You haven't changed a bit, I see. That said, what is he doing here? No way. You're not happy to see Jackie either? I thought you two were super duper close. You missed a few incidents after you died, girl. Apparently, the whole world turned upside down, the way everybody's talking about it. Water under the bridge, everyone. This is a behind-the-scenes extra, whatever the hell that means. So, let's have fun with it, like good old times. And he's like, let's forget about the fact that I tried to kill Yakubo. I like the way you think, Beefcake. Hell yeah. May I say something? Go for it. You tried to assassinate me. If anything, you should be begging for forgiveness. Oh, yeah, that did happen, huh? Yes, it happened, and because of it, I started seeing ghosts, and my council got killed, and I just about lost my goddamn mind. What done is done. Water under the bridge. You can't just erase years of agony with a few words. Beefcake has some beef with Jackie, and ended up roast beef. Yeah, you're a genius. Taha. <laughs> was that all my suffering was? The punchline to a bad joke? Anyway, that's how we're doing things. Whoosh, right under the bridge for you too, boss. Like, let's have fun. Don't think I'm going to be any nicer to him just because this is an extra. Morgs was just saying the same thing. I only got a quick overview of what happened after I died, but I think you of all people could have given Jackie a little bit more benefit of the doubt. What? What he really needed was someone who believed in him through thick and thin. Near the end, rather than just listening to Mel, was it? You should have given your old friend Jackie a chance to explain. Did Jaren just say something sensible? Wait, how do you even know about Mel? I intercepted signals from the great beyond. Right, I forgot. Anything goes here. If we're only talking about the Requiem time frame, then yeah, maybe you could argue I didn't trust him as much as I could have. But we have a whole nother life under our belts you don't know anything about. I got two eras worth of hatred for this bastard. Oh, you mean the third door. Once again, how the hell do you know about that? The great beyond! <laughs> She's far beyond any of our comprehension, at least. The, the point is, in that life, his family killed my family. That was just his family, though. Jackie didn't have anything to do with that, did he? Ugh. He made me into his damn maid. To take care of you, right? Ugh. <laughs> Jackie isn't a black-hearted villain. Y you don't have to tell me that. There's just too much I can't brush under the rug. Mm, that's sad. It's not every day we get the whole gang back together, so I was hoping we could make it into a nice reunion. I was super excited for this backstage event. 
I know that technically Michelle and Giselle weren't in this story, but I'm hoping they somehow end up making an appearance. Sniffle. <laughs> oh, fine, fine, I'll act normal, but only until this is over. And you quit pouting over there like a little bitch. If I'm doing this, you're damn well doing it too. Uh, right. Sorry. I said quit it with the pouty shit. You didn't have any problem acting more spirited in other similar extras, so why are you being such a downer this time? Don't you think that's asking a bit much after how Requiem ended? I'm pretty sure I was breaking character in the other ones anyway, but now I'm just normal young Yakubo. It sure was one hell of a heavy story, huh? I didn't expect it would end with everyone dead. It was hardly a surprise for the, those of us who know how the main game ended. Everyone could have lived happily ever after. If only that attack on the brothel didn't happen. So sad. Jaren! Jaren! Excuse me, girl. You you kind of helped facilitate that. This is kind of on you. No kidding. God damn, if it wasn't for that. <laughs> they all have that realization. I think they're like, wait, Jaren, weren't you behind that? Hold on a sec. You conveniently skipped over the important fact that it was you who caused the attack in the first place. What? I didn't do anything. You goddamn know you did. You were the Lord's Mole. Oh, right. That. But I didn't think that was what would happen. I assumed those herbs were just a regular gift. I was just as surprised out of my pants as anyone. She's never had anything inside that head of hers. Anyway, like I said, whoosh, under the bridge. The point right now is to have a fun little chat. The pile of crap you're trying to fit under this bridge is a bit too tall. But what do you want to talk about? This backstage thing's for sure, um, this backstage thing's for screwing around, yeah? So I say, let's have a drinking contest. I'm not sure I follow your train of thought. You never stop bitching, do you, kid? Jackie is about 80% bitch, after all. Personally, I'm perfectly fine with screwing around for a few hours, but I'd kind of like it if we could all do a quick rundown of what happened in the story together. It could be fun to, like, compare Requiem to the main game's final chapter and point out where they're different. Hey, you know what? That might not be bad for me. Like, I, it hasn't been that long since I played the main game, but there were some things that I, like, forgot, or I was a little, like... I was like, oh, I don't remember if this happened or that happened. So, it might not be a bad idea. That would be a change of pace, I suppose. Putting the spin in spin-off. That doesn't actually work, you know. All right, well, get to it. I'll, and then be done with it so I can leave. You're no fun, Morgs. I don't want to spend any more time here than necessary. Jackie, Jackie, you make sure she doesn't go anywhere. And while you're at it, hold her tight and whisper sweet nothings. Do it, and you're deader than dead. I feel like things could proceed much smoother without me. Hey now, don't be such a downer. We're brothers in arms. I'd be real upset if you left. Gratie, for a split second, I was almost touched. But I'll still never forgive you for what you did to me. Someone needs to give you wishing lessons. It took all of us... It took us all of ten lines to get off track and back to screwing around. Can we get bit can we get down to business here? Aye aye, Captain. Ta-da! <laughs> on the right, we have the key visual for the main game, and on the left is Requiem, where Jackie is the hero question <laughs> mark. I wouldn't say hero, I would well maybe hero turned villain. Or turned anti hero. What was the question mark for? Requiem tells the story of Jackie's younger days, followed by the true version of events from the main game's final chapter. The first half was probably pretty surprising to a lot of people, since, since we only got a super duper teensy weensy look at that part of his life in the main game. There was a lot of new characters, too. Well, the whole lot of us did get lumped under companions over there, yeah. Pretty rude of them not to mention such a memorable, sweet, and adorable girl like myself. You, uh, certainly did leave quite the lasting impression, including how you went out. Teehee. Why, thank you, Jackie. Someone needs to teach you what a real compliment sounds like. The point is, going into any more detail in the main game would have distracted from the actual story at hand, which had a different focus. Oh, you mean with Snowy? Snowy? He's all white and cold, like snow, so Snowy. You should call him that next time you see him, Jackie. You gotta make sure you've always got a friend, or you'll, sel you'll start self-destructing again. He is the last person I want to make friends with. Why? He seems like such a good guy. Because Morgana has taken such a goddamn liking to him. Being friends is out of the question. I'd rather put a bullet between his eyes. Oh, Yakubo, come on now. Don't be jealous. Keep your pathetic thoughts under control. 
I swear in my life, not a thing went through my head, Morgana. And don't say my name. You'll taint it. And things were going so well between you two. Let me tell you something, and you might want to write it down. All is well that ends well, and all is bad that ends bad. All those dots are making things sort of uncomfortable, so let's move on. Sounds like a plan. Okie doke. Let's keep this train chugging. <laughs> One of the real highlights of the first part was getting to see everyone so young and in innocent and fumbling around. All the sweet human drama and a rare look at a somewhat reasonable version of Jackie. Excuse you. You can't say she's wrong, though. You went really far off the rails after you became Lord and during the third door. Ugh. Hell, you were pretty down to earth in your thoughts in that flashback of the third chapter, too. So why is it you have to climb up on a fucking ivory tower anytime you talk to anyone else? You're not such a haughty bitch normally. I'm just trying to make sure people don't look down on me. And you're going about it entirely the wrong way. Bitch. <laughs> Jackie's generally been the starts out as a colossal dickweed to turns out he's kind of a soft hearted deep down and wasn't always the bad character. But for Requiem. Yeah, oh my god. But for Requiem, your character arc went in the opposite direction. Tell me something, Jaren. That description's not how you really feel about me, is it? Everything in quotes is straight from the author. Well, that's good to hear, I think. Whatever, continue. Getting to see young Jackie growing up and making friends and doing all sorts of young people stuff is great, but you can't forget about the bits from Morg's perspective. There's nothing worth mentioning about anything from my perspective. I disagree. You were big, bad, evil, dark Morgs for all of the main game. And even when you told Snowy about your past, it was all ooh and ah. Don't describe it like that. It's confusing and misleading, and no one reading can hear you making spooky sounds as you say it. When the person telling it become is being all bleh and bleh, people are going to get a different impression about who you are. Now even I'm not sure what you're trying to say anymore. She has a point, though. It's pretty impressive how differently the story comes off told from your perspective as a 9-12 to 12 year old girl. Seeing such a wide range of emotions in you brings tears to my eyes. You're just imagining it. It's perfectly normal to be emotional. You were just a little kid. You'd just be a bit of a sourpuss, but otherwise a completely ordinary girl if that part was all there was to your story. But this little shit had to go and turn you into a witch. And then you went on to hold, what, like a thousand-year grudge or something? Not totally sure where they're, what they're getting on about, but it sounds like you're getting the crap kicked out of you, kid. But don't worry, Gretan's here to sweep you into your rescue. So, what all you do, anyway? As penance for what I did to you in Requiem, I'll stick up for you no matter how bad you cocked up. I kept Morgan in prison for half a year and killed her. <laughs> Gretchen's like, excuse me? Uh, sorry, ain't no sticking up for that. <laughs> That's a good good reaction. In addition to that, in his next life, he imprisoned half of my soul. Yep, can't defend that, kid. Sorry. But I know how to fix this. Fix it? That's possible? Hell yeah, you just gotta hook up with a girl who's into that sort of thing. You wanna lock someone up? She wants to be locked up? Everyone wins. Hey, slow down. I didn't imprison anyone because I wanted to. You mean that's not your kink? No, goddammit. Enough of this. Move on. I'm going to be bullied for the rest of eternity if we don't proceed. Aye aye. As Requiem's first part goes, we see Morx slowly opening up. She starts off screaming about dirty whores and divine punishment, and eventually she chillaxes into a pretty normal girl. Can't you describe anything normally? Just watching that heart of ice melt was the cutest thing in the world. And it was, of course, Jackie who helped make it possible. Me, Boss, and the other girls spent a lot of time with Morx but Jackie was the one who really showed the most concern for her. At first, he only did it out of pity. And maybe some of what Francois said at the beginning, too, so he could pat himself on the back and pretend he did a good deed. But before long, his feelings changed. He started to think of her like family, someone he cared deeply about. And then those feelings changed again during the bit with the sunrise. Ah, so young, so sweet. Jackie and Morgs sitting in a tree. <laughs> she does know how the story ends, right? I didn't just imagine us talking about that, did I? But then everyone's happy days came to a sudden, terrible end. Jackie felt completely powerless, helpless to do anything, and it crushed him. This event changed the course of his life forever. Using right 
uh, using a ring with the Barnier family crest given to him by a noblewoman, he led the people of the slums into revolution. But I'm guessing he was driven more by hatred than anything else. Not for the bandits that attacked the brothel, but his own worthless self. <laughs> she was, uh, she kind of bang on there. And then, revolution time, she's like, and then I died, Wee! <laughs> yeah, Francois, you kick butt. That's all you care about, isn't it? Oh, you were pretty decent too, Jackie. You make it sound like I'm just a footnote, and she's like, and then you cut my head off. Yeah, I'm not kidding. You were pretty impressive. Right off the bat, you killed a guard by throwing a knife at him. That takes skill. And he got me right between the eyes in the third door. Did he kill a bunch of people then too? Oh yeah, tons of them. He was a mafioso after all. Oh, scary. So as you can see, Jackie's a lot more capable than he seems. He just uses that uh, capability for all the wrong things and ends up ruining everything he touches. You've got looks, money, power, smarts. How are you such a train wreck of a human being? Wouldn't I like to know? He's also really susceptible to being caught off guard. In the third door, while he was distracted with everything going on with his wife, he let himself get shanked by his coachman. Oh, I didn't- I didn't even remember that. And then at one of the options near the end of the final chapter, that crazy madman with a sword took your head clean off. You probably could have prevented that if you hadn't let Snowy get under your skin so easily. Hey, guys, can we stop talking about all the ways I screwed up? Let's move on already. Oh, if you insist. So, the first part ends with, revolution, with the revolution being a huge success. And in the second part, suffering and misery. I mean, that's pretty much- that's what- that's what it should- the subtitle should be. The House in Fata Morgana, suffering and misery. But before that, it's time for the intermission. Here, you get to see me and Francois together. I definitely wasn't expecting that monster to, monster to take the spotlight at any point. He had a lot going on himself. That doesn't make him any less of a twisted murderer. Francois definitely loves his dread and despair. He reminds me of a certain beast. That certain beast is a bit more direct with his violence, though. I have to say, it completely knocked my socks off when we found out it was him you had a thing for. I totally thought you were just thrown into the game so Yakubo could build a harem. That, that's another spin-off. Uh, the House in Fata Morgana, Yakubo's harem game. Either that or someone just there to, I don't know, help awaken him to his interest in girls before he went after, after the main heroine? If that was all the author was going to use such a disgustingly adorable girl like me for, I'd place the big dummy curse on them. What an unthreatening curse. That threw me for a damn loop, too. The official site even sticking that bit in about how a certain someone has caught her eye had me convinced it was Yakubo. Yeah, the official site's character profiles are always a bit misleading. Like, for the main game, Boss's profile said she was the white-haired girl's only ally, which turned out to be a huge lie. Hopefully no one tries to nail them for false advertising. You know, the more we talk about it, the more I feel like you're really just fucking pathetic, Yakubo. Shut your damn mouth, I know I am. I want him to be wearing a shirt that says 80% bitch on it, that's amazing. And on to the second part. From here, we start getting closer and closer to the main game's final chapter. But Jackie's still mostly reasonable at the beginning. He tries his best to be a better lord and govern his land. As a side note, one of the traits listed on your character outline is hardworking. Here, you work your butt off to improve the city. In the third chapter, you work your butt off to improve business. But you're super bad at picking allies, so you end up not trusting anyone, unable to open up, Unable to tell who's on your side and who isn't, and eventually destroying yourself for it. And to top it all off, you don't like people looking down on you, so you do everything in your power to be a huge jerk. Pathetic. I want to disappear. As he gets deeper and deeper into the politics of running a city, Jackie's perspective and priorities start changing, but what really pushes him over the edge... is Beefcake's beef with him. Sorry for screwing things up for you, kid. Wipe that shit-eating grin off your face. And it's all downhill from there. His console dies, and he's stuck seeing the ghost of Francois, and all sorts of other dangerous people who, sit who didn't show up as more than footnotes try to do all sorts of terrible things to him. And before long, Jackie's a broken mess. I feel much the same now. Oh, and for the record, Francois's ghost wasn't an actual ghost. It was Jackie's hallucination. Snowy had ghost troubles in the main game, too, but that was a real deal ghost. Well, yes, it was me. I would have much preferred to have Morgana tormenting me than Barnier hovering around trying to undermine everything. 
Seriously, dude, keep your masochistic fantasies to yourself. Would everyone stop trying to read my goddamn mind? So, little by little, the old Jackie disappears and he turns into a bad, bad guy. That's one of the most painful parts of the story. Watching someone put in an honest, solid effort to improve things, only to end up being corrupted. Like I was saying earlier, Jackie really needed someone he could trust in his life. It would have been nice if he could have found someone else after Odlin, uh, Old uh, Lone died. She's as bad with names as I am. <laughs> his name is Odalon. I know, it was a pun on Old and Lone. You can't just smash two words together and call it a pun. What you should have done is made me your counsel from the get-go. I would have never been able to get anything done, and it would have only enabled you to go after my head quicker. Have a little faith in me, kid. You were always really aggressively competitive with Chaki. If anyone, I think it should have been Boss as his counsel. Now, that I could see. I think Maria would have been pretty good. That was my plan, and it's the whole reason I was learning to read. Uh, I had no idea. Never ended up being of any use, of course. Boo, I think if you were going to see him, Boss, you should have done so a lot sooner than you did. Damn. Damn, just imagine if that had happened, if Maria had gone to see him and offered to, like, be part of his council, and he actually felt like he could trust her, and he had a friend by his side, things could have maybe changed. It would have been better if he'd crashed in shouting, What the hell are you doing, Yakubo? the day he put Pe Beefcake's head out on a spike. You would have probably still been able to get through to him then. Of course, you're plenty at fault here too, Jackie. You need to learn to be more open. But that doesn't let you off for not dragging it out of him either, boss. All in perspective, right? All foresight. I can't believe she's got Maria with her back to the wall. You seem sharper than usual here in the backstage, Jaren. I thought you were supposed to be an airhead. She's like, oh, I'm reading a script. I flipped on my super smart switch for the occasion. Super smart is clearly an exaggeration, but I can't deny you're much more clever than you were in Requiem. The author tweets me a bit because we wouldn't get anywhere otherwise. I can see the fourth wall crumbling. Hasn't it always been my job to run these things anyway? Why'd you end up with it this time? Because if you were in charge, you'd skip over all this and go straight to see Snowy. Proceed. Aye aye. Oh yeah, that's right, it was Morgana, I think, that was bringing people around, not... Oh gosh, I can't remember now. The end of, like, the main game, was it... Giselle, or was it Morgana who went to like, all right, let's go see these people. So once Jackie's gone off the rails, he starts getting cruel and merciless. He tears down farms and works slaves to death, and overall everyone kind of starts hating his guts. He did the same sort of shit in the third door too, put a factory out of business and made a whole lot of fans for it. There is no such thing as a world where everyone can be happy. That may be true in general, but in your case, you're just being a fucking shitheel. Ugh. This is- this whole backstage thing is the let's just make fun of and just tear down Yakubo. And then we get to the big turning point, him locking morgues up in the tower. About that, Morgana, I, uh, the only wishing I will be doing is sending your soul straight to hell. What? Your soul straight to hell. This is the one screw-up you really can't talk yourself out of. Though, it's at least more understandable than how it was presented in the main game, I think. That was the super short version of it, so you didn't get to see much of how he painted himself into a corner. But here, that was the focus. And then we switch over to Morgz's perspective. Probably the most important part of getting Morgz's perspective is the scene where she finally throws off her mask and reveals her true feelings. Yeah, that, I can't believe you felt so strongly. You didn't even hint at it when we were together, but then you straight up said, would you stay with me? That was a dream sequence, you oaf. It- what? I was a child and my mind was running wild. There was nothing to it. You can't just brush it all under the rug like that. It's too important of a moment. Hmm. But I know the truth. You don't actually hate me. I don't completely revile the slave man. But I will always detest you, the lord. Now, can you imagine my utter dismay upon learning the two were the same? Uh, I- I'm sorry. Man, you're getting roasted from every direction for this backstage, Jackie. Considering how badly he screwed everyone over, is that a surprise? So, back to the story. While she goes all sappy once, Morgz ends up hardening back up as she spends more time alone. 
This wasn't mentioned explicitly in the game, but apparently one of one of Old Lone's men actually stopped by her little lakeside cottage once. What? But since Morgs didn't open the door to anyone who wasn't there for her leafy greens, she ended up chasing him off. Someone mentioned that, that it was actually, I believe, the, um, the person that Jacobo initially sent uh, was the one who came by and then she just, like, sent him away. I believe the exact phrasing was, and I quote, I sent away anyone who wasn't here for medicine. That's what the line was there for. Exactly how many opportunities were missed? Things might have gone differently had she opened the door, yeah, and then the swordsman wouldn't have had to been the one to come over. Morgs makes her way to the Lord's Manor, where Jackie's waiting. They have a heartwarming reunion, and then she becomes his counsel and transforms the city into a, a theonomy. It becomes a new holy land for which a new wave of crusades begins. Exciting stuff. You realize the crusades began almost a century after we all died, right? Anyway, I wouldn't have made her into my counsel if I'd found her. If anything, my bride. Ugh. I don't like the way that he said I would have made her my bride like she doesn't have a choice. I will murder you with my own two hands. For the love of God, stop reading my mind. While she's all holed up, a flaxen-haired young man pays Morgs a visit. The boy formerly known as Mel. What's he known as now? The boy formerly known as Mel manages to get through Morgs' shell briefly, the reason for which is a lot clearer in Requiem. But of everyone and everything from her old life, it was the slave man she could ultimately never forget. I did forget his name and what he looked like, though. Maybe things could have turned out differently if you hadn't? Remembering you wouldn't have made you any less of a monster, thank you very much. And it was more like you locked that information away that, than actually forgot it. I'm betting you'd remember just fine if you'd reunited in better circumstances. But what a crazy bonkers reunion that turned out to be. Everyone who played the main game already knew that, though. The scene where Morgs confuses Jackie for Francois is clearer here, too, I think. Snowy did mention how Morgs wasn't quite in her right mind, but it packs a lot more punch actually seeing it from her perspective. Yucky cutting off her arm definitely messed her up pretty bad. <laughs> y yucky? Is it like... I think it's supposed to be Yuki because it's like Yuki Masa, but I just like the her calling him Yucky. That's the least fitting name yet. Would you please stop coming up with increasingly convoluted nicknames for everyone? Just call that infernal creature Bestia like everyone else and be done with it. Alright. Bestia! <laughs> oh. oh, Jared, I love you. I just love the idea of like, Yaka will be like, hey, Bestie. <laughs> so the two of them are finally reunited and it's very tragic. Jackie is torn. He wants to set her free, but he can't. And the reason for that is, again, much clearer in Requiem. Clearer, but still far from convincing. This is also about the point in where he figures out Francois' ghost is actually a delusion, all in his own mind. I refuse to believe he wasn't real, though. Getting a bit off topic here, but in the third door, we see Jackie has a real beef with anything supernatural or not provable by science. And this is where that came from. Not just the ghost. But the miracle blood was a huge part of that too. It left a mark on his soul that never went away. Huh. Here I thought he was just a wimp who couldn't handle ghost stories. That's true too. I'm not surprised. So Jackie ends up lying to himself about what he really wants and keeps Morgs locked up in the tower. So that really isn't your kink? That is the first thing you say after not talking for god knows how long? Didn't seem appropriate for me to butt into this part. How many times did you tell her, I'm gonna show you the world, and then all you showed her was a big old brick wall? You don't have to remind me, I feel bad enough about it already. Jacobo I knew wasn't the kind of man to do that to a girl. It's kind of depressing to see even an upstanding guy like you can fall so far. Yep, while love was one of the big themes of the main game, friendship and companionship was more the focus in Requiem, and all the different ways it can break apart. It's enough to make me cry. I thought you were incapable of feeling sadness. I understand loneliness. I can cry about that. If you say so. Going a bit out of order, but speaking of friendship, Maria had that real killer bit where she was talking about how everyone was gone and they weren't going to come back and all that. Yeah, that stung like hell. My friends mean more to me than anything else in the world. Whew, I got super heavy in here real fast, huh? Moving right along. 
Next up, Boss tries to confront Jackie. Here's where things start by diverging from what was in the main game. What you see in Requiem is what actually happened, and the main game is more like a simulation with Snowy thrown in. So things go off course real quickly. God, I remember I was at the end of, of this game, I was like, I knew, I knew that there was no way that Michelle was going to come in because that was like, you know, a like what if scenario, the best case scenario, but I was still like, oh, I knew it was going to end badly, but I was still hoping for a miracle or something. On Snowy's very first day, he manages to convince the boy formerly known as Mel to work with him. Why do you keep calling him that? I feel like it. I love her nicknames for people. Now, because the boy, formerly known as Mel, switches teams, that night he and Nellie are on the mansion's grounds. Boss comes to look around, sees two strange shadows, and decides to push it to the next day. And when she comes back, she bumps into Snowy. So, in the main game, she never ends up meeting with Jackie. But in reality, Snowy wasn't there, so the boy, formerly known as Mel, isn't wandering around to get in Boss's way, so she's able to recon without any trouble. And the next day, she brings the necklace and a knife and breaks in. She goes all out trying to kill Jackie, but he stops her, breaks her arm, and then has Yucky throw her out. Once again, I know it's probably Yuki, but I'm just gonna call him Yucky. No mercy. That was me showing mercy, you realize. Normally, an attempt on the Lord's life would be punishable by death. I use the Harvest Festival as an excuse to stop him from killing her. Yucky was really raring for some blood. And the way he asked, should I kill so-and-so, is hilarious. Not so funny to the so-and-sos he's salivating over. So when all that's happening and Jackie sees the necklace, he starts reminiscing about old times and then has a crazy idea. He decides to impersonate his old self, pretending to be the slave man who once saved her from the Lord, who he is now. Talk about super bonkers. I was completely out of my mind at that point, yes. Not even going to try and talk yourself out of that one? How could I? In the main game, Jackie doesn't go up to the tower alone with morgues, so he never gets a good look at her condition. It isn't until they all go up as a group that Snowy points out what bad shape she's in. But in Requiem, he does go up alone, which is how he realizes. He confesses his true feelings, but morgues is so broken it can't even get through to her soul, so she doesn't hear anything he says. Once Jackie finally comes to his senses, he's finally freed from his shackles. It's really sad it could only ever happen that way, though. But with that off of him, he starts treating the people around him a little nicer, like the old Jackie. But it was too little too late, and Morgs dies. This leads to a big panic while Jackie watches, or which Jackie watches from the observation tower. And the rest goes the same in both games. As a side note, Snowy only really needed to get into Jackie's memories to flip the table on Morgz's per uh, perception, but he kept those memories locked up so super tight, especially everything related to his younger days, that it wouldn't have worked if they'd gone straight to him. Plus, Jackie's soul was crazed like a rabid dog, so he wouldn't have listened to Snowy from the beginning. And also, ignoring Yucky and the boy formerly known as Mel would have left their souls in pretty bad shape too. Which is why the main game had to go the way it did. We only got the abridged version of Jackie's past in the main game. But you should just think of it as more proof of how tight he kept it locked up. And while I'm at it, I'd like to elaborate a bit on the curse too, yes. At his death in Requiem, Jackie realizes what he really wanted in life and feels super bad about how much he messed up. But then Morgz is all, from now on only money and power will be your friends, and put a curse on his soul. Excuse me, I would rather die than use <laughs> a tilde in my speech. Which is why, even after figuring it out once, he ends up making the same mistakes and dies all sad and alone again. Kinda tragic, huh? Curse or not, he's still a fucking dick. It wasn't Morgana's curse that drove him to constantly insult and belittle his wife. But you did push me in that direction, as I recall. That's true. The third door started in a similar place to Jackie's fall into darkness as the Lord. And being a mafioso, He'd probably been worn down a whole bunch from all the betrayals and crazy mafia stuff that happened outside the story. There's only one way to fix this, I think. Make Jackie live a quiet life out in the sticks. And that's it for Jaren's Review Corner. It wasn't really a review corner, it was more of like a synopsis, but that was fun all the same. Even knowing how it turned out, that was still pretty damn heavy. Jackie ended up destroying the things he cares most about with his own hands. It's pretty dang grim, yeah. 
Now that I think about it, you did kill damn near everyone who had a sprite, didn't you? Ugh. And if you count breaking Maria's arm as resulting in her death, that pretty much makes the whole gang. Ugh. <laughs> that's impressive, kid. You went on a frickin' massacre. Please, that's enough. So to survive in this game, don't have a sprite. If you include minor characters and no-names, Francois and Yucky would be neck and neck with him for the gold medal. But Jackie definitely had the most story-relevant kills. Jackie the Ripper. <laughs> There's a good nickname. For the love of all that's holy, don't call me that. Oh, he went to go hide in the corner. I think the one-two punch of being compared to a serial killer and seeing that smile would bring down just about anybody. Aw, I thought it was pretty funny. Of course you did. You don't comprehend negative emotions. Now, now, everyone may have died in Requiem, and most of them because of Jackie, but this is the backstage extra. Whoosh, everything under the bridge. And what are you planning to do now that you've tossed the entire game into the water? How about we go over the characters next? The characters? Yep, for example... Oh, uh, uh... <laughs> okay, what's going on here? She's like, long cat, what? <laughs> this is what I look like. And I'm sure everyone's picked up on this already. But according to my outline, I was missing all my screws right off the bat. And that's why you were always so cheerful. Not because you're optimistic, but because you're mad. Some part of my brain just never turned on, I guess. So not only are you airheaded, even that air is worthless. Also, I have a dulled sense of pain. You kind of have to make it through a childhood. You kind of have to to make it through a childhood like that. It didn't come off as bad as it really was because it was colored by you being eternally happy-go-lucky. But thinking back on it, that was some real dark shit, especially that whole bit when you were five. It seemed pretty normal to me. The world is bad enough without everyone having to go through that. Okay, next up, Beefcake. I love we're just like, uh, the artists are like, we want to show off like our, the full sprite. We worked really hard on it. And it's totally within their right to do that. I love that just like, all right, got to get a good look at everybody. And here's my full bod. What do you think? Looks pretty tough. Or look pretty tough, don't I? Beefcake's profile describes him as a wild animal with wild animal with an unbeatable competitive streak. He's an act first, think never kind of guy, and the second biggest doofus in the cast only after me. <laughs> hey now, that's just mean. I mean, I hate planning everything out, yeah, but still. He's like a giant huggable gorilla slash big brother figure who tries to fix everything by punching it. Which is one reason him trying to poison Jackie stood out so much. He was so upset it caused him to resort to real underhanded methods. Hey, you can't tell me I'm wrong. I'm way stronger than he ever was. I bet most readers didn't have a very good impression of you with the way you went out either. I mean, that's even more embarrassing the fact that, like, Yakubo is literally poisoned, near death, and he still man- and also, like, I guess, like, he drank poison, but he also drank wine, so he was, like, a little bit drunk, mostly poisoned, um, and he still managed to kill Gretier. That's pretty bad. You think so? That's kind of a downer. All right, whoosh it all under the bridge, guys. Whoosh. I'm not enough of an idiot to keep up with these two. But, you know, maybe some reader saw what you did coming, Beefcake. There's a line in the main game that went like, I invited an old companion to my manor to, dis to discuss matters, but the meeting only turned into an attempt on my life. Well, I forgot. I forgot all about that. If someone had a really good memory, they could have maybe made that connection and guess what you'd end up doing. I guess you got that kind of right. I didn't leave on the best note, and what I did to Yakubo was real shitty. I was cocky and told myself I was better than him in every way. But at the same time, I wanted to be, you know, there with him. Maybe I wouldn't have made a good counsel, but there were other things I could have done. Like, head of your guard or something. I'd have come running to be your right-hand man if you just sent for me. You were lonely down there in the slums all by yourself, weren't you? I don't know, I'd say I was disappointed more than anything. I was ready to help with anything, and I wish he'd used me. Man, I can see from Gretzian's point of view where it's just like, you know, he helped Yakubo with this whole big plan. Twice. Twice he helped Yakubo out. And didn't get anything in return. Didn't get an offer to, like, have a job there for stability. Make, you know, some money, get out of the slums. Just kind of forgot all about him. I feel you. Nobody was on the same page for most of the game. I still don't think that justifies trying to kill him. Whoosh! <laughs> Whoosh! Alrighty, next up is you, Morgs. 
You can skip me. Nope, you're going to. So there's a full view of Morgs. This is when she was still itty bitty and her clothes were way too big. Adorable, huh? Make a few poses for them. Absolutely not. Blah. Also, 12-year-old Morgs is actually shorter than Nellie, but if she was shown at her actual height, the text box would cover her almost all the way. So her sprites were bumped up a bit. Oh my gosh, I even love the idea of like, of Morgana and she's so little that like, you can't even see her over the text box and she's just hovering. <laughs> you just see like the top of her head. And she's not the only one who's not shown to scale either. Boss is only 160, uh, 160 centimeters tall, but she's placed real high up on the screen too. Just pretend she's wearing some wicked heels. Everyone sprites are positioned so you have a rough idea of the relative height, so don't take it as true to life. May I be excused? Oh, I was hoping you'd give a comment first. I have nothing to say. Pa. Okie dokie, you're up, you're up next, Jackie. Oh, Jackie. <laughs> huh? He's over in the corner making a face like his death with CG. Oh, you, Jackie. Hey, Mork said she has something super important to tell you. I beg your pardon? Oh, what is it? I'm all ears. Oh, man. That took less than two seconds. I have nothing to say to you. Go back to your corner and die. Stop, stop, stop. It's your turn to show off your full body sprite, Jackie. So perk up and make yourself presentable. I said perk up, not whatever the heck that is. May I be excused? Oh no, not you too. Why can't you go back to the tough-spirited Jackie from the first half? You were super duper impressive in your fight against Francois. Y you think so? That was certainly your peak at least. And it was all downhill from there. Uh oh. Morks, and I was just getting him back in the spirit. Sigh. We talked a bunch about what kind of character Jackie is already. He's just as inadequate as he looks, Damn. And like, with Jaren, it's even worse when she says stuff like this because like, she's not even trying to be insulting. She's just speaking her truth. I'm not inadequate. Jackie's got two modes, his softer, more approachable mode, and his all business, no fun allowed mode. It's the latter we're all most familiar with. It's not till you see things from her, his perspective that you realize there's more there. From the outside, Jackie just looks like a huge monster. Especially all the ways you killed Snowy in the main game. Talk about ruthless. It was the man with the sword who did most of the killings, as I recall. You did shoot him, and you ordered him killed several times. Hmm. Maybe that'll teach him to toughen up if he wants to be protag material. How can he call himself the hero if he doesn't even know how to wield a sword? He's got the vitality of a housefly, and a little sunlight's enough to knock him out. How much more pathetic can you get? He's a pacifist, like Gandhi. Except for the time he attacked me with a goddamn whiskey bottle. You can't complain about something that happened in a game that was never translated into English. You'll just confuse the readers. Well, now I'm curious. The point is, Snowy is the total opposite of you. Plus, he's actually somewhere in between boy and girl. So you shouldn't go trying to apply your fragile masculinity to him. <laughs> what? 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 Whoa, I broke Jackie. She didn't even hesitate to reveal his secret. Why on earth does she know that anyway? Don't joke about that sort of thing. It's not funny. What? But it's true. What the hell does that make him? Can anyone think of anything else about Jackie we haven't mentioned? He's a lot more skilled with his hands than you'd think. Oh yeah, that's right. He can even play the loot. Oh, the part where he jacked from- uh, He jacked one from- Oh my god, I almost read that very wrong. Um, especially saying about how he's skilled with his hands. The part where he jacked one from a guy off the street. Yeah, that fucking slayed me. He's not a half-bad singer either, but you'd never guess it from looking at him. See? Except for the part where he can be a douche, like, he seems like such a package. And that's not something that was added for Requiem either. It came up in the main game too. Remember the flashback in the third door where we were singing together? There was also a short story somewhere where you were humming to yourself. Even the worst Italian ever born is still an Italian at heart. I gu guarantee you, I am far from the worst. But music-y stuff is something you stop doing once you go no fun allowed mode. 
It gets tossed along with everything else about your younger self. It's too bad you couldn't have kept even one sympathetic trait. If you look closely at the background graphic for the Lord's bedroom, there's a loot in it. Maybe he did keep playing. By himself? How lonely. That's pretty sad. Fittingly pathetic. I shouldn't have said nothing. I'll take every last out one of you out back. And that about covers Jackie. You're up next, boss. Huh? How come it didn't show my legs like everyone else? You don't have a full body sprite, boss. <laughs> She's like, of, all the, of everyone, I should. My body's banging. What? Why the hell do I keep getting the short end of the stick? Sorry, boss. The staff were kind of fumbling around in the dark as they made the games, and it wasn't until Requiem that uh, sprites were given legs. But because of that, it offered a lot more possibilities for animations and stuff. So hopefully, you'll, uh, you'll give them a break. They're still learning. Oh, alright, fine. Everyone just imagine Boss's beautiful legs. Make them sexy as hell. <laughs> so in the third door, you came off super scary with the way you betrayed Jackie. But in the final one, you were more of a tough, reliable big sister. And Requiem focused even more on how much you care about your friends. It's always been who I am. My friends, my family, mean more than anything to me. Revenge for what the Berzadis did to my family was what pushed me to go so far in the third door. But god, that damn attack on the brothel and Requiem really did ruin everything. If that hadn't happened, Morgana wouldn't have been taken, Jacobo would have just gotten that dumb idea into his head, or wouldn't have gotten that dumb idea in his head, and we all could have just stayed together. Yep, yep, it all really comes back to that. Jaren, I am possessed with a desire to grab you by both cheeks, pull on them as hard as I can, and give you an earful about how you don't have any goddamn right to talk about that event with any words except I'm sorry. Ugh, oh, aggressive much, Jackie? One of these days, one of these days, pow, zoom, to the moon. Oh, is that a thing about, like, um, what is it? It's the Honeymooners, right? Or something, it was like an old TV show where it was like, to the moon. Was the person's name Jackie? Is that, like, the reference? Hold on, let me look this up, I'm curious. Okay, I was mistaken. It's to the moon Alice, because the husband would always be, like, you know, like, basically, you know, hilarious, like, old-fashioned, uh, comedy about, like, hitting your wife about, like, one of these days to the moon, Alice. Although the main game did end with me and Yakubo not on the best of terms, so it's nice people got to see us enjoying ourselves in Requiem. I suppose so. Okie dokie, so that covers the main five of us from the slums. Next up is Jackie's favorite council. Oh, Odalon is going to be here. I don't know how I can face him after how we parted ways. H hey, Jaren, do you think you could wait and do his sep- Oh, old- <laughs> Old loan. <laughs> hey, damn it, let me- Oh ho ho, tis been much too long. I must confess I was not expecting to be summoned here. H hey, nice to see you. Well, well, why such a guilty look on your face, my boy? Did you do something you'd be ashamed to admit to me? Ugh. Twas but a simple lark. Hold your head high, my lord. I bear much of the blame myself for leaving you behind so early in your growth. Aw, oh, it's like he's a father that he never had. Or, you know, a father he can't remember, but... No, you're not to blame for any of my mistakes. Twas my sworn duty to teach and guide you for the length of your rule. I should have chased the scoundrel out despite your objections. Perhaps even poisoned him myself. Whoa, whoa, Grandpa! Getting a little feisty there. Silence, peasant. You are the one who made an attempt on his life. I, I mean, you got a point, but... Hey, hey, hey! You're forgetting to whoosh everything under the bridge. Now's the time to have fun. You know, Jacobo, it strikes me, yes? You're not a total shit heap when you've got someone to keep you in line. Like I said, Jackie just needs a friend. A friend who uh, would help, sure, but what he really needs is someone to kick him in the ass every time he tries to steer the train off a fucking cliff. That metaphor doesn't even make sense. Don't try to deflect from the point, asshole. His heart is in the right place, at least. Nevertheless, I only knew him for a short spell, and he was a very hard-working man during that time. So my impression of him is mostly positive. We should show this old man what a bastard he was during the third door. I don't think I've ever heard Morgana swear before. And what did he do in this third door? He constantly insulted and belittled his wife until he broke her. My lord, you must show care and respect for your family. Ah, he's hitting up with the old. I'm not mad, just disappointed. It's funny how, like, 
Everybody is so mad at Jacopo and he seems like to feel bad about it, but he seems to feel the worst with Odalon and he didn't even really do anything to him. Like he didn't murder him, he didn't do horrible things like he did to all of his friends and yet this guy just seems to get through to Jack, to Jackie and just make him feel so guilty. You are absolutely 110% correct. I regret everything I did and I spent decades living with that regret. The reason you turned out that way must be because you had no one in this third door to guide you down the correct path. And with no one to open up to, you had to wear your mask in perpetu uh, perpet per eh, perpetuity, all the negativity festering inside until you were permanently corrupt. Odalon. Ergo, I shall reincarnate in this third door and ensure that does not happen. You will what? I will stand by my lord's side and make certain he does not stray from the path even a single step. Slow down, stop. You're going to <laughs> you're going to destroy the main game's whole story. And good riddance. Please stay away from it. Jaren, hurry up and show the old man Sprite so we can get rid of him. He's going to undermine the entire story. I think it would be fun to see what he does. No, it wouldn't. Not in the slightest. My curse will have been all for nothing. Very well. You may regard my old we weary frame. And with that, I shall take my leave. <laughs> Maria's like, so this guy gets a full sprite. This character we barely even, like, got to, you know, hang out with. And yet she didn't get a, a lower sprite. Oh, you're not going to stay for longer? A council is supposed to operate from behind the scenes. I'm happy to have been given the opportunity to briefly appear. If you say so. Be well, my lord. And may happiness find you in your next life. Thanks. And you too. Farewell. Until we meet again. All right, that leaves one last character with a full body sprite. Let's bring him. Whoa, 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 slow down. I know exactly who you're talking about. You are not bringing that man. Oh, it's got to be Francois, isn't it? You're not bringing that man here, are you? Why wouldn't I? This is supposed to be a fun event, with everyone whooshing everything under the bridge. That tyrant has a very different definition of fun than the rest of us. Oh, Francois. Damn it, you actually... You summoned me. Go right back wherever the hell you came from. Haha, <laughs> it would appear I've stumbled upon a swarm of filthy maggots. Where's the bug spray, Jaren? I need, I need you to clean up this mess. Francois, bug spray hasn't been invented yet. Oh, how unfortunate. There's so much wrong with this, I don't even know where to begin. Okie dokie, could you stand right there and give me your best smile, Francois? No, please don't, it's terrifying. I hate it, but of course, how could I not grant the wish of my most prized possession? Ugh, that is not a smile! Feast your unworthy mortal eyes upon the noble body of the great Jean-Francois Barnier. My blood is genuine, unlike a certain imposter. You're giving me goosebumps. Hmm. I wonder if the real reason Odalon ran off was because he didn't want to run into Barnier. That has to be it. I can't think of any other reason. Francois was the villain for the first half, but by the end, I think he seems like a pretty decent guy. What's everyone else think? A uh, hard disagree. I cannot disagree with you more. The mere sight of that man's face makes me want to vomit. Not to mention, he was the one I wanted to curse most. Sure, he did a bunch of really bad things, but he did a couple of super good things. Plus, he fought all real valiant and brave at the end. He's an inspiration. Ha! A lord could hardly carry out his duties if he cowered in fear at the sight of a couple of peasants. Just because what he's saying sounds reasonable don't mean you can forget he's a crazed mass murderer. You would call a man entertaining himself with his private property moral, morally objectable? Understatement of the century? If this wasn't a damn extra, I'd lop your head right off here. Like so? Rah! <laughs> bah ha ha, child's play. Don't just pull up that damn graphic without warning, you're gonna give me a heart attack. My soul left my body for a moment. Hmm. You can act like you went out in a blaze of glory, but don't forget you were begging for your life at the end. That hardly counts as begging. In what universe does, oh no, please don't kill me, not count as begging for your life? One must be crying and clawing their attacker. 
wailing for mercy through a fit of pathetic sobs in order to properly count as begging for their life. I did none of that. Yet that was precisely the wording used in the main game. I would like to have a word with the author. The main game was just the short version, so cut him some slack. Your character wasn't fully established at that point. Hmm. Do not coddle them. In reality, my character was no more than a vague concept when it was written. Christ, he's attacking the author now. You did kind of come off like a third-rate villain in the main game, yeah. Just seeing that, I didn't expect you to be developed the way you were in Requiem. Crosswan needed to have a real firm driving force behind him, even as the big baddie or he fall flat in his final confrontation against Jackie. Plus, he also had the super important responsibility of getting into Jackie's head after he was dead. So he needed to be big and imposing, or he couldn't do that. Makes sense. On a slightly different subject, I just remembered the whole deal with you having your eye on someone back in the first part. Yeah? Well, to start, this is what you said at the Midsummer Festival. He's got trouble expressing his feelings. He kind of looks angry a lot of the time. He can be pretty haughty, but I think he's a pretty great guy, if I'm remembering correctly. Yep, yep, that was me. Tell me, Jaren, in what way does that man have trouble expressing his feelings? You don't think he does? The whole reason he had to kill his family is because he couldn't talk to them about what he was feeling. Those are not the same kind of feelings we're talking about. No? Whatever, moving on. The he kinda looks angry a lot of the timeline? Kinda doesn't even begin to describe it. It's the perfect fit in my mind. I refuse to believe that. Moving on. The other two I can sort of buy, at least. He can be pretty haughty, and I think he's a pretty great guy. So you two were a thing? You betcha. We most certainly were not. What? Oh, Francois, you don't need to be shy just because there are other people around. You seem to be confused, Jaren. I did say you were the second most important thing in the world to me after myself. But I never meant- I never said I meant so romantically. What does that make me, then? My pet. Your pet? Surely even you will feel something about that. I'm more than happy to be your pet. I get food, a bed, and lots of attention. It's perfect. Haha, <laughs> you never let me down, Jaren. Very well, then. Run in a circle and bark for me. <laughs> woof, woof, woof. I can't deal with this. In any other backstage event, this would be the embodiment of fragile masculinity over there making all the ruckus. But it would seem the two of them have some uh the two of them have somehow managed to outclass him. Jaren, this covers all the characters, right? We're done here now? Because I'd like to be on my way. Aw, oh, do you really not want to spend any more time with little old me, Morks? It has nothing to do with spending time with you specifically. But there are two men here I would like out of my presence as soon as humanly possible. Morgana, please tell me I'm wrong here, and you're not putting me in the same category as him? Hmm. It genuinely hurts being lumped in with that monster. I feel like I've been kicked in the gut. So, if you don't mind, I'll be taking my leave now. And going where? To see Michelle, obviously. Every single time. <laughs> oh, Jacobo, the jealousy. Why is it always Michelle, Michelle, Michelle with you? because he's the one who ultimately led me to my salvation. You know, that doesn't nullify everything we had between us. No, you did a perfectly good job of that all by yourself. Ugh. Now, so long, everyone. Peace. Wait. Jackie, this is the time for you to go after her. You locked up both Morgs and half her soul. A little stalking should be a piece of cake for you. That just makes it sound like I'm some sort of deviant. D damn it, I was gonna go after her anyway. I won't just sit here with my thumbs up my ass while she goes to see him. Break a leg. And not hers. <laughs> oh, so maybe we will get to see Michelle after all and Giselle. I'm a tag along too. This sounds like fun. Oh, it's gotten real awkward. What? You're leaving me alone with the two of them? Hey, we are going to get to see Michelle and Giselle. So, Michelle, what book should we read together next? The classic we read last time almost put me to sleep. A harsh reminder of how much my mind has uh, acclimated to the times. Then, how about something lighter and more modern? Say, perhaps, Harry Pop. W what in the heaven's name was that? Uh, is someone trying to break in? I'll call the police. You stay there. I'll go look. Cough, cough. Was there no nicer way to get here? And what in my father's name are you doing here? I couldn't let you go see him alone. Get your hands off me, you wretch. W wretch? Morgs, you're squishing me. 
Could you get off? Oh, for heaven's sake. I know that voice. So do I. Ugh, what a nightmare. Nice to see you again. What? Why are you staring? Oh, you don't understand how we just popped in out of nowhere. Well, you know, this is another one of those backstage extras, so a little bit of time-space distortion is... Uh, oh my gosh, she is the most adorable thing I have ever seen. What? Look at how small she is. <laughs> I just want to squish her to bits. I would really rather you didn't. You agree with me, don't you, Michelle? Isn't Tiny Morgana the most precious thing in the world? She is a lovely girl, yes. Uh, oh, is that so? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Wonderful, the noisy one's here too. The Michelle I know would never say that. You're supposed to be an emotionally and socially stunted <laughs> shut in. Jacob was like, God damn it, no, Michelle, he's gotten like cool now. I have no chance. A lot can change in a millennium. I seem to recall speaking my mind during the final chapter anyway. A thousand years isn't long enough to dethrone King Neat. Sorry to burst your bubble, but I am currently both employed and in a relationship that lets me go on dates, outside. I, I nearly fell asleep just listening to you talk about calm down. Also, he said he's in a relationship, so relax. That aside, you're looking quite young, Jacobo. Well, uh, it's a long story. <laughs> peep peep. And who is this young lady? I'm Jaren, the heroine of A Requiem for Innocence. Excuse me, that is my title, thank you very much. Since you've accepted your position as the story's heroine, does that mean you will also accept you have a fated connection to me, the hero? Never mind, Jaren, you can keep the role. At least consider it. Um, I'll bring everybody something to drink. Well, thank you for catching us up. It's been a while since we've done one of these. How exciting. And it's also kind of nice being in a different role this time. Going around and talking to everyone is a lot of work, yeah. I would have much preferred you to him. What are you doing standing over there? We're split up into light side and dark side groups. The two of us have been through so much already. I'd like for the rest of our lives to be nice and relaxed. Even outside of canon. Our story this time was happy from start to finish. It was a very lovely date, yes. Three seconds till Jackie's gasket blows. Three, two, one. Don't give a countdown, you lout. It doesn't even make sense. You can't end the main story like that. And then follow it up with a bunch of empty fluff? Who gives a damn about you eating popcorn? Do you prefer yours, sweet or sulky? A uh, salty, Jacopo. Salty. <laughs> You are what you eat, <laughs> you salty bitch. <laughs> Get assured it says 80% salty bitch. <laughs> that said, I do agree that such a lighthearted, relaxed story does feel out of place in the same package as Requiem. However, what? It's entirely your fault Giselle had to spend a millennium as the maid. You were just able to behave like a reasonable damned human being. All of this could have been avoided. Yep, Yagbo, it's all your fault. Everyone gets a chance to lay the smack down on Jackie. It was a long, long time ago, though. Let's put the past behind us and enjoy this special occasion. Besides, that period of my life isn't just a bad memory to me anymore. Sure, it was hard to get through. But I wouldn't be here with Michelle as happy as I am if it wasn't for that. All is well that ends well. The main game may have had a good ending, but Requiem most certainly did not. Alright, let's talk about something else. I'm going to die of an ulcer at this rate. Michelle, Jaren was telling me something curious earlier. And what would that be? That, um... That you're, uh, well, how should I put this? Oh, the, you're a guy and a girl? Just spit it out, you're giving me the creeps. That you're physically only partly a man. First of all, where on earth did Jaren hear that? And second, why the hell would you bring that up in casual conversation? I guess it's safe to assume she was telling the truth. I'm sorry, Snowy, I never hurt, meant to hurt anyone. But she frequently does, because her head is as empty as Jacobo's heart. Also, is Snowy referring to me? Cute nickname, huh? Sure, I suppose. Call me whatever you want, fine. Do you have a nickname for me? Hmm, our names both start with J, sounds, so that'd get confusing. Let's see here, how about... Boo- oh, <laughs> boobs. <laughs> I love it, just like, you just literally like, boobs. Don't you dare finish that word. Okay, Ellie it is. 
Yay, it feels nice to be called by a nickname. Quite frankly, it's not a detail I wanted to go spreading around, as my body was the source of much torment in my life. Michelle and I traveled down similar paths. I was a saint who became a witch, and he an angel who became a demon. Or, that was how we were seen by others, at least. The both of us, we are like unto God, and you are as far from God as man can fall. Well, that doesn't change what I think, that you're just an ordinary girl. Nothing special, breathing the same air as me. Well, I was the one who helped her turn her back from a witch into the main game. You should offer her your hand next time, if there is a next time, and don't let go. I've made it perfectly clear I have no intention of our souls crossing paths ever again, and he's already said his goodbyes as well. However insignificant the chance may be, it's human nature to want to root for it to happen. I do appreciate that, uh, like, I know there's other spin-offs and stuff and other stories from this game, but, like, they didn't wrap it up in a nice bow where it's just, like, you know, Morgana and Yakubo see past their differences and they end up, like, together. Like, though, that pain is way too much for Morgana to ever forgive. So she is, I think, is, like, reacting the way a lot, a lot of people would. It's just, like, I can never forgive you for this. Like, we, we can't be together. We can't be friends. Like, there's just too much trauma there. One such improbability was the last scene of our story in this game. We managed to reunite, so I'm sure everyone else will, too. If by some cruel twist of fate I am to cross paths with him again, I will still never forgive him. I don't expect you to. In any event, didn't the author say somewhere I was supposed to reincarnate into a butterfly or a cat or something similar? Ideas come and go. Consider that yet another of many possibilities. That would have been a much crueler twist of fate than anything. Requiem was already much darker than I had anticipated. All I had seen before this was bits and pieces of his past. It's hard not to pity him for the way everything crumbled down around him in his younger days. And I didn't know how the ending played out either. I always assumed he just kept his feelings to himself and let Morgana die. I, so I was surprised when he actually told her at the end. Of course, he waited far too long, and none of it got through to her. What's the matter, Snowy? You're staring off into space. It's nothing. In any event, good luck to you. I don't need- I don't need your damn well wishes. Very well, then. It'd be amazing if we could meet up in the present day, too, Morgs. I bet we'd be right about the same age, maybe in secondary school together. We could even be in the same class. That'd be great. I would drop out the first day. Aw, oh, why do you have to be like that, Morgs? You never stop talking. Then I'll try to talk less. But I really want to be your friend again, Morgs. And there's all sorts of stuff we could do together, like go shopping for cute clothes. And because I'm such a big doof, my grades would be terrible, and you could help me study for tests and stuff. Oh, and then Francois could be our teacher, and it would be perfect. A perfect nightmare. I expect that class would show up on the news within the first month. We, uh, seem to have gotten off track. May I ask why you're asking about what's between my legs? I just thought I might have to be more careful with my words if it was true. Are you even capable of choosing your words? Oh, for the love of God. Your tongue has gotten much sharper, Michelle. I have had a thousand years to work on it. Now, you don't need to get weird or walk on eggshells. I'm a man, and that's all there is to it. My being intersex does not change who I know myself to be. And this body is no longer a cause of fear or anxiety. I've made peace with who I am, and you should too. Very well. It seems prying was not required. I will continue to treat you the same as I always have. He's like, with disdain. Please do. You know, while I'm not at all fond of your high and mighty act, that was actually moderately decent of you. Only moderately? You're much more agreeable like this, and far less grating to speak with as well. Lord Slashy Businessman Yakubo is a massive riot, though. Never once have I tried to get a laugh out of someone. Oh yeah, Yakubo, in your description on the main game's website, it said you will readily toss aside anything to achieve your goals. It just struck me that you yourself was one of those things you threw out. Dumped his whole life right into the garbage he did. Put a sock in it. Try to be a little more selective about what you get rid of next time. At heart, you're not a completely evil man. Hmm. So, back to the previous topic, Snowy. 
You said your body's the same in this life as before. That's correct. I used my wish at the end of the main game to reunite with Giselle. But I've no misgivings about my body anymore. I've embraced who I am, and I'm firm in my identity. But the most important thing to me is being with her. And together, there's nothing we can't accomplish. Indeed. Save it for when you don't have company. <laughs> well, I hope you have a fulfilling life. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Why are you all giving me that look? Can you blame us? No one expected to hear those words coming out of your mouth. The sky is going to fall tomorrow. Did you eat something you shouldn't have? Every time I try to say something nice, this always happens. Haha. -ha. With that and Morgana, we've now got double blessings. We're unstoppable. We have a long, happy life ahead of us. It feels like they're rubbing it in. Like, Jacobo and Morgana, pretty much everybody else had horrible lives, but no, the two of them, they get to be happy together. Well, it's about time we hopped on back to our own time period. Yes, you two go on home. I live here now, in between the two of them. That is right. It did show at the end. Morgana does get to have a second chance. It's the perfect fit for me, in every sense of the word. There's no room for either of you. Farewell, Jacobo. Jaren, may our souls never cross paths again in the boundless sphere of fate. Uh, should I drag her back? No. What? Hey, let go! Get your filthy hands off me! Quit whining and move your butt. <laughs> Do you want me to bite you? Go right ahead. Fucking, the little brat, she actually did it! Bye, Snowy. Bye, Ellie. It was nice meeting you. And thanks for helping Jackie open up a little. We didn't do anything. I hope we can all meet again someday. I'll miss you, Jaren. Me too. Goodbye, until we meet again. Bye! Vroom. <laughs> I was hoping that maybe Morgana would stay with them. She was quite the lively girl. That she was. But I had fun, and there were some nice surprises. Indeed, young Morgana showing up was certainly unexpected. Plus, Jacobo being unusually open and Jaren being this bright ball of energy were both wonderful. But the best part of it all was definitely getting to see you smile so much with everyone, Michelle. Oh, you don't need to worry so much. Oh, wait, what did she say? I missed the last part here. Let me just go back to the log. If I can get to it, what's going on here? You don't need to worry so much about me anymore, Giselle. Okay. Whoa, where'd the space-time distortion take us this time? Get your hands off me already, or I'm going to curse your soul for all eternity. Maybe we're going to get to see... Uh, maybe we get to see Mel. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, the boy formerly known as Mel and Nelly and uh, Yucky. <laughs> Hmm? I thought you said you would have nothing to do with me anymore, including no curses. Why are you suddenly back on your high horse? More like I'm back on my game. Please, just let this be over. Just because we're currently outside of canon doesn't mean I'm going to ignore anything you did in canon. All the pain and misery you caused me is still real. No amount of joking will ever make it go away. You're an irredeemable monster. I know. I just hope one day... I can help make it so the good memories far outnumber the bad. I know you said we won't ever cross paths again, but I still want to atone for what I did to you. To you, and to the other half of your soul. It's all I want. Your efforts will all be in vain. Maybe, but I'll deal with that when I come to it. Hey! Um, I hate to interrupt this really serious conversation, but how long are we gonna have to wait here off to the side? Hey, look! It's the boy formerly known as Mel! What? what Then who am I now? And who the heck are you? I'm Francois' pet. Hey, don't use that name, you buffoon. He'll think you're talking about me. What? You mean the man standing here... Jean-Francois uh, Jean -Francois Barnier? Oh, he's a bit younger than I remember. I knew you were a creep, but now you're making people into pets? You've hit rock bottom. You want another taste of my fist, huh, punk? For the record, I'm not the man she calls Francois. I won't get into the details, but I just had to assume his name. Sure, whatever you say. Wait, hold on a second. Maybe I'm just imagining it, but you, Barnier, or whatever your name is, you don't seem like much of a stuck-up- uh, you don't seem like as much of a stuck-up jerk as I remember. The boy formerly known as Mel is starting to freak out. Stop that, I'm not formally known as anything. Ah, it's the Saintus. 
Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. She's so tiny. A mini saintess. She's adorable. Would you please stop shouting in my ear? You're going to make me go deaf. Come have tea with me over here, saintess. I've got rose petals to put in the teacups to make it even yummier. And there's also cake loaded with sugar. Oh, that sounds good. I want cake too. I don't know who you are, but I'm such a nice girl. I'll let you have some too. Yahoo! <laughs> I am not going to have snacks with you, and you sure are unusually clingy considering how much you despise the other half of my soul. The first door goes whoosh right under the bridge. It's spreading. Ah uh, ha ha, it's pretty crazy how girls can go from nothing to friends in the blink of an eye, huh? Hee hee hee. Oh yeah, so who's the dirty hobo? I don't look that bad. Every boy other than my first and second brother is gross by default. So you'll have to try a lot harder than that. Oh, the second brother is Michelle. When Jackie starts trying to impress people, he gets drunk on money and power, so please don't encourage him. Hey, there's Yucky. It got quite lively in here while we were away. And what's her nickname for Pauline gonna be? Hey guys, it's been forever. I haven't seen you in... Well, I haven't seen two of you before at all. I swear every last one of you has the same reaction. He says he's the Lord and that due to uh, plot contrivances, he's younger than when we knew him. The Lord. <laughs> it's not that hard to make the connection, is it? The Lord was more purple, I thought. <laughs> Don't associate people with their clothes. Use their faces, you brain-dead feral dog. Oh, I wonder if, uh, yeah, yeah, didn't he have, like, an issue with faces? Like, he had, um, uh, there's a term for it, or there's, like, a condition where people have trouble with faces and that's why like when he killed Pauline like he he didn't recognize her I'm beginning to wonder if Yucky would be able to tell the difference between you and Francois even if he wasn't not so oh also where's my second brother and the maid didn't they come with you they're busy flirting with each other in the present day oh that's no fair I want to see the present day too if you wish hard enough maybe you'll end up there there's tons of different cakes to choose from too Let's go to the Cheesecake Factory. I love that she... <laughs> I love that she knows that the Cheesecake Factory exists in present time. I want to go too. But I put on some weight recently. I'm trying to shake it off. I don't want him to abandon me because I'm not to his liking. I love women with powerful appetites, Pauline. <laughs> uh, then Cheesecake Factory, here I come. Hooray, we could all go together. Please let them go to the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> It'd be amazing. I can't even bring myself to make a job about how he always says exactly what she wants to hear. I wish I could Photoshop. Like, I wish I was good at Photoshop. I would Photoshop them inside the Cheesecake Factory. I would have Yakuba wear a shirt that says 80% bitch boy, or what was it? 80% salty bitch. Or just a shirt that says salty bitch on it. You'll come with us too, won't you, my dearest Mel? What, me? I don't know. I feel really awkward being the only guy with a bunch of girls. There's going to be so many of them there. If you want to fit in better, you can just dress like le uh, dress up like a girl. Why is that the first thing your mind jumps to? I think you'd look dashing as a girl, dearest Mel. You two would make a lovely pair of sisters. Then we'll have to go dress shopping for Mel. Could you please not? If you want to come, Jackie, we can dress you all up nice and pretty. Like hell. And don't try to get a reaction out of me because it won't work. I didn't know you were into that, Lord. You seem to really want to relive my first obliterating your gut, boy. I would kind of like to see that, though. Not the Lord, but Yukimasa. Are we gonna get, like, cross-dressing a scene? I feel like they would all make very pretty girls. Pauline, if, if that is what you truly desire of me, you are allowed to say no, you realize. If we're only here to faff about like fools, then I'll be taking my leave. You're just looking for any excuse to bail, aren't you? Hmm. You seem really prickly, not in a very good mood, Saintess. More so than usual, I mean. That shouldn't be any surprise when the most upsetting man in the world is still in my line of sight. Oh, I don't think there's much for us to talk about this time, really. Yeah, what the heck? I barely got any screen time in this game. I'm calling my lawyer. And I look even more pathetic after this. You're only useful if you've got Snowy to nudge you in the right direction, boy formerly known as Mel. I- not- oh, never mind, it's not worth it. I too lost a few points with this story. Without that angel's help, the both of us end up villains. 
I actually feel like you might have gained some points. You were kind of more controlled here than in the main game. Very true. Hey, Yucky, could you do your catchphrase for me? My catchphrase? Pretend a violent goon just came crashing through the window, and you can do whatever you want to him. Shall I kill him? Yes! <laughs> he said the line! He said it! I'm not sure I'd call that a catchphrase. Yukimasa, remember what we agreed on. No more talking like that. Uh, of course, Pauline. I was merely acting for the girl. Oh, okay. That's a relief. I may need to curse the beast again. Uh, anyway, he was a monster from start to finish. And everyone came into this knowing that, so I doubt public opinion is any worse than it already was. We even got to see his wicked smile more times than in the main game, if I'm counting right. Well, he's nothing if not consistent. Michelle may have talked to him into helping out, but he never actually felt shame or regret about what he'd done. The closest he gets to breaking free from that is in the second door. Maybe what we need to do is knock his memories out of him again. And bring Bestia back? Are you out of your mind? Haha. <laughs> that said, I am glad I got to see everyone again, even at the cost of my reputation. I hope we can do it again sometime. I explicitly said we wouldn't, as you might recall. I mean, I guess, but... As time changes, so does the heart, Saint Tess. That's right. Well said, Nelly. Teehee. It would be super sad if you ended Requiem in the same place as the main game. Besides, you need to come into the Cheesecake Factory with us. You're never going to stop talking about this place, are you? You're all free to believe what you want. Nothing's going to change where I stand on this matter. You are a stubborn saintess. That is sort of a prerequisite to cursing someone for a millennium, yes. Didn't you say that strong wishes come true, though? So I'll wish really hard for us to see each other again and go to the Cheesecake Factory. Does your us include my other half, the white-haired girl? What? You can't stand her, can you? I... I'll play nice with her next time, I promise. I'm not the girl I used to be, not anymore. I see. Well, if by some impossibly remote chance you do run into her, be sure to apologize. I doubt she bears any ill will over it, though. That's a promise. I'll tell her I'm sorry and make up for what I did. Nellie's surprisingly well-behaved with Morgana around. Although, she was completely destroyed, so no amount of wishing will ever bring her back. But I won't stop you from trying. Alright. Now I think it's about time we wrap this up. It's dragged on far too long. It's not like we get to do this more than once a game, but I don't see a problem with taking it at a relaxed pace. There's relaxed, and then there's running around like a bunch of chickens with your heads cut off, and you are firmly in the latter category. Now, farewell everyone. Until our souls cross paths once more in the boundless sphere of fate. That is Morgana's. <laughs> That's her, like, catchphrase. Bye-bye, Saintess. See you. I hope we get to meet each other eventually. Young Saint, I pray your next life may be a peaceful one, and I swear I will never cause you any more pain. Goodbye. Stop dawdling, you two. We're leaving. Right. Later, guys. It was great meeting you. So long, and see you again, perhaps. A fitting place to end, I suppose. This always was the story of a cursed mansion. Hey now, aren't you forgetting about someone? Ooh, who could this be? Is this the painting? Is this, uh, George? What? Oh! You! Sup! Hey, it's Mr. Mask! That's gotta be your worst one yet, Charon. I mean, she was gonna call Giselle boobs, so... Oh right, I forgot your story was included in this too. Come on, how are you gonna just forget one of the best stories in the game? Oh, no idea what he looks like, but he sounds hot. <laughs> uh, Amian is a woman. Oh, huh. Hey, both guys and girls can be hot. And I put money down on me being a better man than every other damn guy in this game. I can't really argue with that. Who exactly is this, anyway? Right back at you, buddy. Who are you? The hero. I have the strangest urge to kick those smug teeth in right now. And besides, wouldn't it make more sense for Michelle to be here to go over my part? You're 100% correct. Let's leave this worthless man behind and go visit him in the presence. In the present. Bleh. Stop right there. I'm not letting you go back there again after how hard I had to fight to bring you back. Fine, then I'll summon Michelle here. He's probably busy flirting with Giselle right about now. I feel terrible interrupting, so just let him be. I thought you wanted to see him. 
Oh, I'm not denying that. I'm just hoping our reunion can be under different circumstances. Next time I see him, I want to be such a hottie his eyes jump out of his skull, not this sad imitation of a zombie. Damn, Michelle, just like, what a player. He's got like all the girl, like Morgana has. I, I think it's more an admiration for him and like, you know, wanting to thank him for like, freeing her. And, but I mean, it was just like, hmm, something there. Can you imagine the look on his face when he sees what I look like? It's gonna be great. Oh, please, maybe Jaren can be like, hey, this is the- this is backstage. We can do whatever we want here. Boom. You're fixed. Just like with Morgana. I want to see what she looks like. Michelle has grown enough that I'm sure he'll have no trouble being friends with you even after he learns you're not a man. Damn straight he will. I pick him better than that. God, he has a job? Friends? A girlfriend? How much more typical good guy can he get? Don't you dare insult Michelle. For God's sake, will everyone stop reading my mind? So, uh... Emmy? <laughs> At the end of your story, was that like a you're a boy inside thing? No, I'm a woman through and through. Just pretended to be a guy for Michelle. Ah, okay, so it's not like a Michelle situation. I do swing both ways, though. If we ever meet in another life, I'd love to take you out for drinks. Or anywhere else you'd like to go. Damn, she's smooth. <laughs> she's trying to pick someone up she met five minutes ago. M my heart skipped a beat. I'm seriously getting Lady Oscar vibes from you, Emmy. Is that why it's supposed to be Oscar? Well, I suppose we should talk a bit about Asante Dele while we're here. That story was originally included in the preview pamphlet distributed before the main game was released, making it rather old. It was then reimagined into game form for inclusion in Requiem. The general beats of the story are the same in both versions, but there's more meat on this one. Plus, it makes my motivations a little clearer. Making it so he started out getting close to Michelle for a less than noble purpose, and then slowly warmed up to him, giving the ending a little more weight, I thought. And as a side note, Amian was also briefly referenced in the main game, during the scene in the mansion where Michelle's spirit's breaking down. Oh. Whoa, I don't even remember that. There's a line that goes, at one point, a man with an unusual disease stumbled across the mansion while wandering through the forest, but there is little more to be said than about that. Yeah, don't even remember that, to be honest. The man it's talking about there is Amian. But that's not all. In the final chapter, he sings a song to the flaxen-haired little girl, right? And he says it's a song an old acquaintance of mine heard while traveling. And that acquaintance is me. Oh yes, I never made that connection. But it makes sense. There's no one else he could have heard it from. So here I was being like, oh, Michelle never brought up this person, but... He did. He would have said as much if it was from Giselle or his brothers. You ended up having a bigger part in the main game than I realized. And I'm glad I was finally able to show up proper here. That reminds me, didn't a rough modern day design for you show up in the short game released after the first popularity contest? It did, but I'm not sure why you're bringing up something readers would have no way of knowing, since it's not available in English. How was I supposed to know that? You were called out for that exact thing just a few scenes back. Anyway, sorry to disappoint anyone reading this who happens to have seen the design. But it's staying in the idea bin for now. Well, now I want to go check that out after. When that game was released, the staff still hadn't settled on what Requiem would end up being. They were exploring a bunch of possibilities, one of them being to make the follow-up a light, cheerful game, which is where that came from. But they decided they really wanted to make something with more substance, that was also capable of standing on its own. So they poured their heart and soul into making the Requiem you have in your hands now, and I hope you're satisfied with how it turned out. Yep, that about covers it. You know, ever since this backstage event started, you felt more like you're co uh, colluding with the author than the Lord. Don't think too hard about it. Now, to talk a bit about the game you actually got, the main theme of Ascento Dele was friendship. That's a thread common in most of the stories included in Requiem, in fact. Friendship, and how easily those bonds can break, very sad stuff. My friendship with Michelle is fine and well, thank you. I just kicked the bucket a bit sooner than him. You and Jackie were both real fixated on finding far-off utopias, though. Your heart's off in dreamland, and you're not seeing what you already have within reach. All I have in reach right now is a cursed mansion. Fair. The time period was a big factor in what happened to us, too. My disease is much more manageable in the present day than back then. And Michelle wouldn't get sentenced to death by the church now, either. I think it wasn't so much a physical place we dreamed of, but the far future. Mm, my eyes are leaking. I thought you couldn't feel sad. 
hush up and read the room. <laughs> well, I had my spot in the limelight, so you should all head back. I hope we can see each other again soon, Immy. Everyone's going to the <laughs> everyone's going to the cheesecake factory. The what? It's a place where you can get all the cake in the world. Me and the other girls all decided we were going. Sounds like fun. Then I suppose I'll join you and the other girls. Can't wait to meet them. It's not that kind of buffet. Hey now, it's poor manners to read someone else's mind. Crude savages, the both of you. Let's be off then. Farewell, uh, Naomi. Should our souls somehow cross paths once more in the boundless sphere of fate, I will consider acknowledging your existence. What kind of goodbye is that? My gut tells me that was some kind of ridiculously backhanded compliment, but I ain't gonna push it. Later, gang. Goodbye. Bye! Ah, yippee, we're back! Took you fucking long enough? I only fell asleep a couple times. Hey, where's Francois? I booted his royal ass back to where he came from. Can you imagine how absurd it would look for the three of us to just be chilling down here together waiting for you to come back? Pshaw. You had me scared for a bit there. I was worried I might not make the cut for the final get-together. Why wouldn't you? You're one of the gang. I just felt really fucking bad about what I did, and I don't think I deserve to be called that anymore. Oh, I didn't realize you were capable of feeling regret, Beefcake. You're the last person I want to hear anything about feelings from. Come on, Morgana. I'm staying right here. Get your little ass moving. <laughs> I know you have complicated feelings about all this, and that I have absolutely no right to make you do anything. But this was still our story, so we should be there. Fine. The gang's all back together. Woo! <laughs> and with this, our story is officially over. Thank you all so much for sticking around for it. Now, some parting words from our heroine, Morgs. Wh what? It'd be weird for me to have the last word in your game. You can't expect me to come up with something on the spot. Okay, Jackie can go first. You think about what you're gonna say while he's talking. What? What am I supposed to say? Whatever, just fuck up and say something. Uh, to all of you out there reading this, I obviously have no idea what you think, how you feel about our story, our lives. But I hope at least it was something that left an impression that will stick with you. While I ended up screwing things up beyond belief, it was still my life, and I fought tooth and nail to make the best of the hand I was dealt. So, it would mean a lot to me if some part of that could find meaning beyond the four edges of the screen. And I'm not sure what else to say. Well, uh, I sincerely appreciate you sticking around this long. Thank you. That's it for me. Nice, now you're up, Morks. Very well. Looking back, this series has been active in some form or another for quite a number of years. Whether you've been following along since the beginning, or only recently discovered Fata Morgana, I offer unto you my blessings. Farewell. Until we meet again. Okie dokie, everyone. Give me your biggest smile. Buh bye <laughs> Thank you so very much for playing our game. As the author, I would not normally make any sort of comment within the game itself. But with this being a side story, a bonus of sorts, I'd like to bend the rules a bit and extend my gratitude to you directly. I'd also like to offer my sincerest apologies for the delays. I mean, I'm not feeling it. I'm playing this game way after it's been released, so... <laughs> I apologize for the delays in a Requiem for Innocence's release, and thank you kindly for your patience. Uh, TL note, the lock team did not consume enough caffeine to keep their deadline, and have been locked up to take time to reflect on their mistakes. Requiem is a deeply unpleasant and painful story, but I tried to sprinkle little morsels of hope throughout it, so hopefully you aren't coming away from it with a terrible aftertaste. As was mentioned in Mian, in Mian's segment, we considered a number of possibilities for a follow-up to the house in Fata Morgana, but ultimately, we settled on the story of Jacobo's and Morgana's past. I apologize to anyone who was hoping for something lighter, but this was the best way to touch in on the themes I wanted to explore, and it feels like it fits in better with Fata Morgana this way. I'm glad I was able to tell the story, and I pray you were able to enjoy it. In writing Requiem, I spent many, many hours digging through the text of the original, uh, original game's final chapter to make sure I didn't introduce any inconsistencies. While you only saw small glimpses of what was in their hearts, I feel like I was able to flesh that out and give it real life here. Jacobo particularly was shackled by something until the very end, and I think I managed to expound on what exactly that was. 
I can't say whether he'll be able to free himself from those shackles anytime soon, but I imagine he will at least be trying. Let's put that hardworking trait to good use. Moving forward from Requiem's timeline, we know he makes the same mistakes in the main game's third door. But perhaps he too will be able to reclaim himself when he's released from the Witch's Curse. Maybe I should make him do a Reclaim Yourself marathon like Michelle. Now, while I said I'm glad I could tell the story, I must confess it was in a way more difficult for me to write than Fata Morgana. Though there was a great deal of pain and suffering in the main game, uh, it was not brought on by Michelle's own failures, and in the end, his actions are still good. Requiem is very much the opposite. Writing a character who knows what they're doing is wrong, hates themselves for doing it, yet still barrels headfirst down that path was something maddening to do. That said, I didn't get to write much of Jacobo's not putting on an act in the main game, so hopefully you enjoyed seeing what's beneath the mask. There are a number of characters in Fata Morgana with multiple personas, and that's an especially deep-rooted aspect of Jacobo's character. In fact, one of the reasons Jern was so utterly lacking in pretense is because I felt that was a big part of too many existing characters, so I made her the exact opposite. Getting inside Morgana's head was also rather difficult. She described her time at the brothel as when she learned to experience joy, so I especially wanted to focus on making her feel more human. While she released herself from her curse at the end of the main game, that only brought her back from the negatives to dead neutral, and I hope one day she's able to turn squarely toward positive. A Requiem for Innocence was not only Jacobo's and Morgana's story, but it was also a story of friendship, companionship, and growth. The characters from the main game didn't have much in the way of proper introductions, so I'm glad I was able to use the first half of Requiem to show them having fun and living their lives without sacrificing what made Fata Morgana what it is. I'm especially fond of the Midsummer Festival scene and Jacobo carrying Morgana on his back under the sunrise. What were your favorite parts? Well, I suppose it's time to draw the curtains for real. Thank you so very much for spending your time with me in the house in Fata Morgana, and I hope one day we may cross paths again. Aw, that was sweet. That was fun and cute and all that good stuff. Oh, we have a, a bonus track fragment. Oh. Okay, let's see what this is about. Okay. So, what's on the agenda for the day? Oh my gosh, what's this? What I want to do? There isn't anything in particular. Oh, this is like at the end. This is like Jacobo imagining like when him and Morgana, they found their place. You know, they were trying to find where they came from together. Don't give me that look. I don't know what people do for recreation because unlike someone, I didn't live a life of leisure and luxury. Yes, that's right. I'm a dreadfully boring person. I imagine you've begun to regret bringing such a dull girl with you. What is this? Not in the slightest. Maybe this isn't Yakubo, because she said something about, like, privilege and stuff. I'm like, that's definitely not Yakubo. At least, you know, not until he became the Lord, if you say so. But you choose what we're doing today, alright? Huh? You want me to sing? I don't mind. What are you laughing about? You didn't think I would agree? Okay, fine. I won't sing. Puppy dog eyes won't change my mind, either. That's it. I'm not going to sing. Alone, that is. Yes, you're singing with me. Go find someone who has a lute and ask to borrow it. Oh, no, this sounds like Jacobo, because he can play the lute. Hee <laughs> hee, you don't get a say in the matter. You did ask to borrow that, right? And got permission? None of the shenanigans you pulled at the festival? Yep. We need to remain on good terms with everyone if we're going to live here. Well, good. I'm glad you can manage that much. At some point, if we're going to do this again, you should purchase your own so you don't have to borrow one. It would certainly make things simpler, wouldn't it? Next time a merchant's in town, if they're selling a lute, buy it. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. As long as it has strings capable of making music, that's adequate. And if it's out of tune, you can tune it. You can at least manage that, can't you? Hee <laughs> hee. exactly how you described it all those many years ago. Fields of wheat as far as the eye can see, swaying back and forth like waves in an ocean of gold. I had assumed that after all this time, you would have lost your fondness for such rustic scenery, that you preferred bustling cities, heavily guarded fortresses, and merchants peddling unusual wares. But it seems I was wrong. 
thankfully. Huh? Yes, I'm quite fond of areas like this. They're pleasant and relaxing. I wonder if this really is where my real father came from. I never told you this, but in my village, I was revered as a saint, worshipped as the daughter of God, and to this day, a part of me still sees myself as such. You're just an ordinary girl. Maybe so. You've said as much so many times now, I'm almost beginning to believe it. That's entirely on you, yes. If I truly am, then I have a father somewhere. One night, I overheard my mother muttering something. At the time, I assumed it was just a dream, but if what she said was true, my father was a mere vagrant, a man whose face I never once saw, whose name I never heard. Would you like to meet him? Frankly, I'm not sure. I wouldn't know what to say even if I did. He might not even know I exist. It didn't sound like he had any interest in staying with my mother, which does not speak particularly well of his character. If he had chosen to stay instead of abandoning her, then she wouldn't have had to lie about having a virgin birth. Maybe we could have been a normal family. And the entire course of my life could have been different. What? Why is that your first reaction? You're not going to hunt him down and give him a piece of your mind, no. Any form of violence is forbidden. Not even if it's for my sake. Too many people have been hurt already. Which isn't to say I don't understand what you mean. When you said the world would trample all over you if you didn't have the strength to fight back. As children, we're both helpless to fight back against a cruel world. But I stand by what I said. No more. I once believed you to be a weak man, but I've realized I was mistaken. I now know you have more than enough strength, enough to take the lives of countless men. Some part of me always knew. But that's all the more reason. I don't want you to hurt anyone else ever again, to take any more lives. All right, I won't. You swear it? I'll have no choice but to deem you utterly re irredeemable if you break that promise, understood? What? No, that doesn't mean I think you presently have redeeming qualities. Have you lost your mind? Honestly, this is not the time for silly do you like me games. Don't tell me you're waiting for an answer, because you never, you're never getting one. What? Fine, if you want to know what I think so badly. No, I don't much care for you. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh yes, yeah, so I was wondering. Other towns celebrate midsummer as well, yes? I see, so it's a fairly standard summertime tradition. Huh? If you asked me to go, I would not object. What? Yes, I'm not particularly fond of the commotion, but it's a unique experience. There were no such festivals in the village where I was born. It was so small, there was little in the way of entertainment to speak of. Perhaps I was their entertainment. A real saint appearing would indeed be cause for celebration. Life in the Lord's custody was miserable, but I'm not sure it would have been much different had I stayed. Maybe getting out was ultimately better for me. It was hardly all good times by any stretch of the imagination, but it did allow me to experience a more normal world. Oh, there you go again. I've long since tired of hearing you go on about ambitions. Yes, yes, I know. My definition of normal is too impoverished for you. I've heard it a dozen times now, but this is what I know. So climb down off your high horse and adjust. I'm not so accommodating. Uh, I'm not so accommodating a girl as to unconditionally support you in your endless endeavors to climb up and up and up. In fact, I intend to kick you back down any time you start trying. So keep yourself in check. I used to think I didn't have any right to interfere with your dreams, but now I'll be doing everything in my power to stand in your way. Keep that in mind. All right, I'll just have to find a new dream. Excuse me? So you're going to look for a different way to be a fool then? Did you hear a single word I said? Every single one, yes. Why do I even bother? So what madness is brewing in that hollow skull of yours now? Oh, I'm going to win your heart. It's still a little ick, because she's she's still quite young, but... I guess he's being honest with his feelings. That was even worse than I imagined. You're possibly the world's biggest fool. Oh, what is it now? You want, to, you want me to call you by your name? 
Why would I waste my breath? Listen to how many times I'm saying your name. You're not yourself today. You're never so forward. It's not right. Perhaps you ate something moldy. Besides, your name is just another word. It's nothing to get so worked up about. What are you, a child? Uh, disappointed I'm not what you thought? I never said that. I'm, uh... I'm not going to call you by your name, understood? For heaven's sake. Let's change the subject. The way you're silently staring at me is making my skin crawl. So, um... The lute. I would like you to teach me how to play the lute. Why? Is there something wrong with me wanting to know how to play? I suppose it is unusual, perhaps. I never had a chance to learn much of anything, though. I know little of how people normally entertain themselves. So I want you to catch me up on what I missed. And don't get upset if I'm a slow study. You do have an impossibly short fuse, after all. Uh, something else. Let's see. You know how to fish, don't you? You would go to the river sometimes, as I recall. We still don't know much about this area. Perhaps there are rivers or lakes nearby. So, teach me how to do that, too. All right. Come on, don't just stare at me. And do you know any words other than okay? Good heavens. She's being very talkative. Will you say my name? She's going to say it at the end, isn't she? You don't know when to give up, do you? Is it that important to you? I don't want you to forget. Ah. Uh, I don't want you to forget me again. I don't want you to forget what I look like. The sound of my voice. Or how I feel about you. I don't want you to forget what we talked about. What kind of man I was. Or the time we shared together. Please. Don't forget me. Why would you ask me that now? Right as I was... No. If I had remembered, would anything have been any different? Could we have not ended up so far down the wrong path? If I'd gone and found you, would that have stopped you from becoming what you did? No, forget it. It's not worth thinking about. Can I hold your hand? Pardon? You don't need to ask for, for, uh, for permission for every little thing. You've always been like that. Always asked permission or had me initiate any kind of physical contact. Except when you'd put that ointment on my face, that is. Even that morning when you carried me home, you wouldn't just pick me up. You made me climb onto your back. It's called respect and, and consent. That's a good thing. Because I promised I wouldn't touch you without permission. She's like, yeah, I was gonna say, um, it's too bad he couldn't have kept all the promises to her. You actually kept that ancient promise for all those years? Is there no end to your stupidity? I swear, someone needs to come up with a new word to describe you. Do as you please. Look at you, a grown man shaking like a fawn. Sometimes I can't tell if you have a heart of stone or of glass. Though I suppose I'm not terribly different in that regard. Unable to even speak my heart unless there's no one else around. Unable to face you except through this childish fantasy. Not even able to show any vulnerability. You once said, who knows how many years ago, that being this close had this effect of making us more open. Well, I, I despise you more than anything in this vast world. You showed me happiness, and then you showed me the depths of absolute despair. I have no idea what to do with you, so I didn't do anything. I couldn't do anything. What other choice did I have? Yet, here you are, still lingering. After I released your soul, you went and put on a new set of shackles. What was even the point? Tell me, how many times have you tried to grasp at this illusion? How many times have you punished yourself? I suppose, if you want to think I'm just part of your illusion, I won't stop you. This whole realm is an impossibly idealistic fantasy. It's fine, and it makes it easier for me to say this. I do regret some of what I did. That I misdirected my anger. Oh, yes, I still reviled you, of course. But even more so. I'm heartbroken. Aw. How did it all end up like that? So far gone. So irreversibly off the path. 
And it was my words that ultimately pushed you over the edge, wasn't it? I want to make amends. I don't need your atonement. I told you already. It's all done. No curses, no forgiveness. Nothing more between us, ever again. Why then am I here, talking to you? It's foolish. We're hopeless fools, the both of us. But it's not my fault. This realm is overflowing with so much warmth. I can't hold back everything I've kept locked away all those centuries. But in the end, I just feel wretched about it all. I would have rather never remembered. Spent our lives trying so hard to suppress those memories, fighting against our past, just as we're doing now. All right, that's quite enough. Would you please let go of me now? Hello? I said let go. Let go of my hand. I love you. Aw. And I hate you. I'll never feel anything but hatred for you. There's nothing left in my heart but that. This is simply me showing pity for a pathetic lost soul. I was never able to let go of you. Maybe you should have said so back then. Though I suppose you couldn't have. I had someone else to lead my way. All you could do was sit back and watch me go. You were never one who could cry in front of others, or hold on to someone for support. You had to rely on the sad fantasy to bring yourself to hold my hand. There truly is no hope for you. So what now? Are you just going to stay here, all alone, for the rest of eternity? Many, many ages ago, when I was still a child, I looked up to you. I might have even had some fondness for you. What? Perhaps so. Perhaps it would have been better if we had done this sooner. I want you. I want you to forget everything I've said. This is a realm where nothing bad ever happens, right? So I'd, I'd like to indulge in this childish dream for a little while longer. Have you finally calmed down? Act smug all you want. I saw everything. I know good and well just how sad a man you truly are. Hee <laughs> hee. Someone's waving at us in the distance. I'm still not particularly good with strangers, but the people in this land are all so kind. And you'll be holding my hand, won't you? Of course, let's go. Yes, let us be off. Yakubo, I knew it. I knew she was gonna say his name. Oh, that's so cute. Oh. Well, it wasn't the, I mean, I guess, like, the thing. It was all just a fantasy. It was all an illusion, but... Rather than showing you the world one day, someday, I'd like to bring you somewhere where your body and spirit can rest easy. This is just, like, a fantasy, an illusion of what he wanted it to be. Not as atonement for my sins. But because I want to see it, too. Like, even though we know how it actually ended, it still was, like, something hopeful. Alright, so what a beautiful way to end this game. That was... It wasn't, like, super fan servicey and and, like, fun and all that stuff, like the one with Giselle and Michelle, but there was a little bit, even if it was just something that didn't actually happen, it was still nice to see that moment at the end with uh, Jacopo and Morgana, the kind of like, what if, if things hadn't gone all wrong. Uh, yeah, very bittersweet. So, just like with the original game, that was absolutely fantastic. All the emotions. <laughs> and like, we knew this wasn't going to end well, but it was still, man, still a rough way to see how things actually went in detail. But I hope you guys did like my playthrough of the house in Fata Morgana. A Requiem for Innocence. As for what game I will be playing next, uh, we're going to be going a little bit different. I'm going to be getting back into Danganronpa uh, because I played Project Eden's Garden recently and uh, got really good reception and I had a lot of fun with it. I'm going to be continuing on with the Danganronpa fan games and I will be doing a let's play of Danganronpa Another Despair Academy. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. That is going to be starting next week. 
Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you again for watching my playthrough of The House in Fata Morgana. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to catch you next week for my new Let's Play series. Until next time, guys. Bye. Special shoutouts to my top tier patrons. Kaori Makoto, SM, Revealing Storm, Tequila Mockingbird, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gaziff, Icognito, Jared Fan, Joel Ustman, Zorn Ether, and Poxy.